Good morning again, Morningstar and friends. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we pray that you have had a wonderful last week and that God was truly in the midst. I believe that he was. I believe that he is still hearing and answering prayers. And I certainly pray that your week this week will be off to a great start today with some word and some fellowship. Uh, so we had a few technical difficulties this morning. The Zoom application was acting up a little bit, but we won't allow that to get in the way of the word. Uh, God is still certainly on the throne. Thank you so much for logging out uh, and then logging back in. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. And uh, we're going to get going here so we can get you on about your day. Um, let's go ahead. If deacons are there and they're ready to give us a devotional service, we'll do that. And then we will speak to one another and then we will move on from there. Deacons, are you ready? Yes, God, we're ready. All right. Yeah. We can hear you loud and clear, sirs. Take the floor. I have a scripture reading this morning coming from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 11. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who heals all thine diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crying thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Mm. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He making known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always cheer, neither will he keep his anger forever. That's right. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And God bless the reader here and doing his holy word. Amen. Amen. Bless the word. Most holy everlasting Father. Father, once again, we your charity come to you by way of Zoom. Oh, Father, we thank you for the technology. Yes, oh, Father, we thank you for your watching over through this week, oh, Father. Yes, oh, yes, yes. for all the real families in our community. Mm -hmm. Yes, be with me, oh, Father. Oh, Father, we ask you to be with our counselor and his wife and children, wherever yes, they may God. be, oh, Father. Yes, yes, just guide yes, them, oh, Father. Oh, you. Father, just thank be you. with us throughout this day. Yes, right. Watch over Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, brothers, for that wonderful devotional, wonderful prayer, uh, and that very relevant and timely scripture. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, so we're going to allow you to unmute yourselves for a few moments just to say hello and good morning. So we're going to allow you to unmute yourselves. Good morning and hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. So, um, couple of announcements here. We certainly want you to lift up the Butler family. So Sister Doris Butler, Brother Michael Butler. Uh, I did find out uh, this week that uh, Sister Butler's brother, Troy Rousen, had passed away the previous week. Uh, that particular home going is going to be today at 11 o'clock. And I believe it's going to be a Dean Memorial funeral home. Uh, so if you would lift them up, keep Michael and Sister Doris in your prayers. Um, all of you probably know Troy, probably have known him before I knew him. He's visited the church a few times, uh, always came in with some snazzy suits on. Uh, so as we shared with Sister Doris, uh, we as a church family, we're praying for her, praying for Michael uh, that God will give them some comfort right now in their time of need. Also want to uh, certainly thank 
all of you for your diligence throughout this global pandemic over the last year, year and a half. Uh, you've been wonderful. You've been wearing your mask. You've been taking care of one another. Uh, certainly, if you have not had the vaccine, I do encourage you to do so. Uh, continue to pray for our children, our frontline workers, uh, our healthcare personnel, our retail workers, social workers. I uh, just want God to keep his arms around them. We are still in this COVID-19 battle, mm. uh, but I just That's want right. to commend all of you uh, for all of your effort. It does yes, not go yes, unnoticed yes. by your pastor. I see some of you out sometime at stores. You're wearing those masks. Uh, you're limiting those conversations. So I certainly appreciate that. Uh, we are probably getting closer and closer to a time of uh, COVID may just be around uh, for a while. So uh, it's going to be very important to get those vaccinations because COVID may be with us for a while. I pray that uh, in time we'll be back fellowshipping with one another in church, of course, with safety in mind, wearing masks and things of that nature. If any of those conversations take place by myself, and the officers, we will most certainly update you on that. We have not had those conversations, uh, but if that takes place, we will certainly update you on that. Uh, Sunday school Bible study will resume this coming Wednesday at 630. We do invite you to be with us Wednesday at 630 as we share the word of God. Uh, by looking at the Sunday school lesson that's going to be uh, the upcoming Sunday. And uh, I'm going to allow you to jot that down in case you don't have your Sunday school book. This is what we'll be studying Wednesday. Uh, the topic, the topic, ball of confusion. Ball of confusion. Interesting topic. Uh, the commentary topic, praise for God's ultimate justice, the passage that we'll be studying, Psalm the ninth chapter, verses one through 12. Psalm number nine, chapter nine, verses one through 12. And then the key verse is gonna be Psalm nine and eight. Psalm 9 and 8. If you need that information after service today, please don't hesitate to uh, send me a text or give me a call and I will share that information with you. Ball of confusion is the topic. The commentary topic prays for God's ultimate justice. And then the key verse, Psalm 9 and 8. The printed passage, Psalm, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 12. If your schedule permits, please join us on Wednesday night at 6.30. We will be most certainly glad and excited for you to join on. Our text today, uh, if you want to go ahead and turn to it, it's going to come from Acts, the 15th chapter. Acts, the 15th chapter chapter. And we'll have an altar prayer a little bit later on as we pray for all of our sick and shut-in folks, as well as pray for the butlers. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the word today. Acts, the 15th chapter. Acts, the 15th chapter. And we're going to begin at verse number six and read for you throughout verse number 11. Acts, the 15th chapter, verses six through 11. That's what we're going to look at today. Acts, it's going to be the New Testament book, right behind the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you, Acts, you're just right behind the Gospels, you'll find that. Acts, the 15th chapter, 
beginning at verse number six. And we're going to read throughout verse number 11 as uh, the disciples, the apostles, are really trying to settle a dispute over circumcision. So they're trying to settle a dispute on having the Jewish lineage, which is Jesus's lineage, versus having Gentile lineage, which is anything outside of the Jews. Uh, and they're really trying to uh, get folks to understand that salvation comes through grace and not by any works of your own. So actually, folks, this is a continuation, a part two, if you will, of what we talked about on last Sunday. On last Sunday, we looked at Romans, a 10th chapter, and saw how uh, Paul really wanted people to remember what salvation really was about mm -hmm. and remember what the end game was about and remember what our responsibility as believers uh, is all about. Mm -hmm. And today is just a continuation coming from uh, uh, Peter uh, and really sharing with us what salvation is all about. So let's read these verses. Acts the 15th chapter, verse number 6 through 11. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. All right. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, talk to us, Peter, men and brethren, Ye know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us, or God chose us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Mm -hmm. it says nothing about circumcision. It said, hear the word, then believe. Yes. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Peter is making the point that God doesn't, doesn't hold them to circumcision and things of that nature. If they believe that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, then they shall be saved. Yes. Verse number nine. And God put no difference between us and them, mm -hmm. purifying their hearts by faith. Yes. Peter, you're preaching right now. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, mm -hmm. which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, right. we shall be saved even as they. Yes. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and especially the doing of his holy and divine word. Amen. We want to speak from the thought that we started on last Sunday as a continuation, a part two, if you will, and that is remembering true salvation mm -hmm. with a subtopic, the end game. Mm -hmm. All right. Call it part two or call it a continuation. Mm -hmm. Remembering true salvation with a subtopic, the end game. And this will be our continuation of last Sunday. On last Sunday, my brothers and my sister, the Apostle Paul was clear in the 10th chapter of Romans that the end game for us as believers is to go out teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, no matter how that person looks, smells, acts, or believe, and that if they believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, then they must be saved All right. or shall be saved, I should say. Mm -hmm. So the apostle Paul on last week, he reminded us really truly what the end game is all about. As believers, we often forget that we have a purpose in life. We talked about several Sundays ago, the purpose-driven life and the purpose-driven church. All right. 
we are and, and, and cannot get caught up uh, in this conundrum of just showing up to church on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. showing up on Wednesday evening and believing that's all it is. That's right. Now, I want to tell right. your morning star and friends, I'm glad you come to church. All right. I'm glad you electronically sign in. I'm glad that when we're in the physical sanctuary, you know where to come. You know how to worship. You know what you're supposed to do as far as showing up physically. Uh-huh. But God is challenging us, he's challenging us through these prophets, through these preachers, through the word of God, he's challenging us to be more than conquerors. All right. He's challenging us to not only dissect the word, to, to ingest the word, to digest the word, but he's challenging us to spread the gospel to all nations. That's right. Folks, I want to tell you this morning that we have to remember what true salvation is all about. Remember what the end game really is so that we may be pleasing in the sight of God. Yes. The Acts of the Apostle often reminds us of different actions that happened in the first century church. And the first century church is the best example that we have on how God wants us to truly minister. Yes, yes, yes. I want to stir up your minds. I want to stir up your hearts that you will never think. That church is just all about just showing up on Sunday morning. All right. But God wants us to reach out to the lame. Mm -hmm. he, he wants us to reach out to the downtrodden. Yeah. He, yeah. he wants yeah. us to reach out to the folks who don't believe like we believe. He, yeah. he wants us to reach out to the folks who have not been exposed to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Not only tell them that there's a better way, but show them that there is a better way. Yes. Morning star. God wants us to remember true salvation. Hmm. And he wants us to know what the end game is all about. It's easy. It's easy. Have you ever thought about how far God has brought you? Hmm. Have you ever thought about what you used to be before you gave your life to Christ? All right. And I know that some of us on the call are, are thinking, well, I got baptized when I was five. I gave my life when I was real young. That's good and fine. But somewhere throughout the course of your life, you got off track. Mm -hmm. You went back to being a filthy rag. Yes. But aren't yes. you glad that somebody reached yes. out to you yes. and exposed you to more of the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ? Uh, the Apostle Paul and Peter are saying the same thing that, listen, the Gentiles, uh, uh, they deserve the gospel just like the Jews mm -hmm. deserve the gospel. And how dare we try to put laws on them that we don't even follow ourselves. Yes. Oh, I think I need to say that again. Yes. How dare we, is yes. Peter's standpoint, try to impose our laws on them and we are rich undone. Mm -hmm. We went in the wilderness for years. We didn't follow the laws. Yes. We did what we wanted to do. Yes. We made golden calves. Mm -hmm. We had idols. How dare we try to hold the Gentiles to being circumcised? Yes. That's we right. must remember. That's right. We must remember what true salvation is all about. Mm -hmm. In our text today, Peter uh, is challenging the group around, particularly the Pharisees. He's challenging them on the notion that the Gentiles don't deserve this salvation that mm -hmm. we have. And I want to tell you now, if you're not reaching out outside of your walls, mm. then you're carrying the same attitude. That's right. If you're not allowing folks outside of your walls to be exposed to the gospel, then you're carrying the same attitude That's right. as the Pharisees. But, mm -hmm. but Peter wanted to challenge this notion that the Gentiles didn't deserve 
to be a part of God's family. Yes. He don't wanted people to understand that we don't have the right to exclude them yes. because God has already included them. Yes. God has said that yes. salvation comes by faith in believing that he raised Jesus Christ from yes. the dead and that Jesus is now on the right hand of the Father. Yes. If you believe that, the word declares, God declares that you are saved. Yes. But there are four things, four additional things that we want to add to last week that I need you to remember. Number one, I need you to remember to reach outside of the family. Hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. Hmm. I need you to remember, Morning Star and friends, to reach outside of the family. I didn't make it up. Look at verse number seven. And when there had been yes. much All disputing, right. All right. Peter rose up in the leadership meeting mm -hmm. and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God chose us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of the meeting, Peter stood up and said, you remember, guys, you, you got you got to look at verse right. six. The apostles right. and the elders came together for to consider this matter. In yeah. other words, yeah. the pastor, the leaders, the pastor and the deacons got together. Yeah. They talked about the matter. Yeah. They decided what was best for the body. Yeah. And Peter said, wait a minute. Yeah. God declared that we reached outside Come of the on, family. Bro. He told me to preach it by my mouth yeah. uh, that the Gentiles might be saved. Yes. I didn't uh -huh. make it right here at Morning Star. I didn't make it up. Uh -huh. Verse 6 said, the apostles and the elders came together mm -hmm. to consider the matter. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, Peter? Peter rose up and said to them in verse 7, men and brethren, do you remember that a little while ago, God made choice among us? Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel yes. and believe. Yes. Peter was reminding them that how dare we say that they can't receive the gospel yes. just because they Come wouldn't on, get circumcised. Yes. I, I need us to remember what true salvation is. Is all about. Uh -huh. Number one here, we've got to remember to reach outside of the family. The Jews already had the promise, mm -hmm. but God want to extend it to the Gentiles. That's right. I need to bring that closer to the home. We got to stop saving, and save folks. All right now. Amen, somebody. Yes. We're too yes. busy yes. trying to save, save, save folks. folks. Yes. But God is kicking and screaming churches in the world. I need you to go outside of your walls and preach the gospel, live the gospel, reach out the gospel to the folks who don't know the Come Lord. Come on now. Look what Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them. This is an important part right here. Teaching them to obey everything yeah. I have commanded you. Uh -huh. And surely I am with you always to the very end yes. of the age. Yes. You see, even to the end, of the you earth. can't yeah. stop at going out. And baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. That, that, that's where we stop sometimes. Yeah. We bring them in. Yeah. Uh -huh. We 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 tell them that they're saved. Yeah. But then we don't talk to them we anymore. Got nothing else to do with them. And they go right out the yeah. back door. Yeah. But, but the word says after 
You yeah. baptize them <laughs> after you've made disciples of yeah, them and say, teaching <laughs> them to obey everything I have commanded you. In yeah. other words, uh, after they're saved, uh -huh. you got to keep teaching them. Yes. Amen, somebody. If I was at church, I would say hello right there. Come on. Uh, Morning Star, we got to remember <laughs> to reach outside of the family. Yes. But not only did Peter stand up in the pastors and the deacon meeting and say, hey, wait a minute, remember what God said? Not only did he remember to reach outside of the family. Secondly, he said, remember that God is in control. All right. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Listen, remember that God is in control. And if I had to put a parenthesis right there, I'd say God has no respect of person. Mm -hmm. Remember, secondly, that God is in control. Look at verse number eight. I didn't make it up. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Mm -hmm. Listen, Peter is reminding them again. Listen, just the way God gave us his Holy Spirit, uh -huh. he's giving it to people outside of our fold as well. All right. Verse 9, and God put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. In other words, Peter said, how dare you Treat the outsiders yes, differently, yes, in a lot yes. of cases, worse than you treat folks who are in the fold. Yes. You got to remember what true salvation is all about. Yes. Secondly, we must remember that God is in control. He uh -huh. has no respect of person. Peter reminded them in verses 8 and verses 9 that just like God gave us the Holy Spirit. Yes. He'll give it to the Gentiles That's as well. Right. Romans 2 and 11 says it like this. For there is no respect of persons with God. That's right. Not only must we remember to reach outside of the family. Secondly, Morningstar, we got to remember that God is in control. Mm -hmm. And he has no respect a person. Mm -hmm. What else do you want us to remember, Peter? Thirdly, Peter wants us to remember that unreasonable practices will tempt God. Mm. Remember that unreasonable practices will tempt God. Look mm. at verse 10. Look at verse 10. Peter says, now therefore, why tempt ye God That's right. to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, mm. which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Mm. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You know, yeah. this is the same Peter yeah. that chopped the man's ear off. Yes. He's kind of zeal. He, he kind of has some pizzazz to himself. Peter said, quite simply, so wait a minute. Yes. You, you want all of them, the outsiders, to follow our laws. <laughs> and we, we can't, can't even follow, follow our laws. <laughs> Peter, you ought to be ashamed yes. of yourself. Yes. Peter said, that's unreasonable yes. that we are allowing our laws, our polity, our things, our traditions to choke us. But then not only are we allowing it to choke us, we want other folks yes. to follow our laws. New yeah. folks, hey, this is your set of laws. Yeah. We're going to keep doing what we want to do. Yeah. Peter said, no, 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 Preach. no, no, no. Preach. That's tempting the Lord. Come on, bro. You got to remember that unreasonable practices will tempt God. What are you saying, Pastor? You know what I'm saying. I, I, I'm saying that you, 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 you go through ministries and usually there's two set of rules. There are rules for the newcomers mm -hmm. and there are rules for the old heads. Mm -hmm. 
And those rules tend to bend and fluctuate yeah, to yeah, fit yeah, the situation. Yeah, yeah. Peter is saying, yeah. if you allow these rules to dictate how you minister, then you'll ultimately tempt God. Come on, bro. Listen, yes. I want to say it yes. again. Yes. I, I said it last Sunday. Y'all not gonna y'all not gonna make stuff up yes. on me. I said it last Sunday. Yes. I'm not saying that churches shouldn't have policies. Uh huh. I, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be guidelines. I, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be processes and protocols. Uh -huh. That's not what Pastor Brew is saying at all. But what I am saying, fix it up, yeah. When those processes, yeah. protocols, uh -huh. regulations, bylaws that seem to fluctuate uh -huh. depending on who we're applying it to, on, when all of that supersedes the end game, which is going out and saving folks, yeah. then we have a problem. Come on. I'm not making it up. Peter said, remember. That unreasonable practices will tempt God. Yes. Galatians 2 and 21, Paul wrote, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to allow God's grace his favor mm -hmm. to lead our decisions. That's right. That's a lot of what's wrong with the country. That's right. We're allowing the laws that men created to guide the country. Yes. But you know what, Morningstar? We should be allowing the grace of God to guide the country. That's right. I, I, I'm going to say it again. I, I, I know that we got to have laws in place. I know that we have to have a legal system in place. But what I'm saying is we have to allow God to lead the okay. way. That's right. Amen. Folks, churches have to be the same way. Mm, mm, mm. We can get so legalistic and rigid as a church. Mm. That we allow our tenets, we allow our guidelines, we allow our rules, regulation, laws, policies, and politics. Come on now. To govern how we're going to treat folks. Mm. And that's not what God wants. In fact, God says that tempts him. When we forget to put the spirit of the law. Yes. Before the written piece of the law. Yes. Not only. <clears throat> not only must we remember to reach outside of the family. <coughs> Water. But secondly. We must remember that God is in control. The third thing we must do. We must remember that unreasonable practices ultimately tempt God. <clears throat> and this is the last thing that Peter reminds us to remember. We must remember how amazing God's grace has been for us. That's right. I didn't make it up. Look at verse number 11. Peter said, after verse 10, Peter said, why would we tempt God with trying to hold folks to our laws that we don't even follow? And then he's summarizing in verse 11 by saying, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved mm. Mm. even mm. as they. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Peter was trying to tell his group of leaders to remember how amazing God's grace has been to them. Yes. Folks, I want to remind you, and, and the key part of that verse is, the end of it, it says, even as they. In other words, we should be saved by the grace of God, 
so should people outside of the fold. We all have the same opportunity to be saved by the grace of God. Listen, I want to remind you today, Morningstar, to remember how amazing God's grace has been for you. And the reason why I want you to remember that and remember how good he's been to you, because when you think about how filthy of a rag we were. Yes, yes, yes. When you think about when we were on our last dime, broke with lint in our pocket. Come on, bro. Come on, When bro. you think about yes. how you weren't you the fire. best church yes. member, you weren't the best co-worker, you on. weren't the best husband, you weren't the best That's, wife, you yes. weren't the best child. Mm. When you remember mm. that mm. God's unmerited favor mm. continue to protect you, mm. Why wouldn't you want somebody else to have that same opportunity? Yes. Paul says it like this in Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. I challenge you this morning <clears throat> to remember what true salvation is all about. Mm. Remember what your purpose is all about. Yes. Remember what the end game is all about. Yes, yes, yes. Think in your spirit and your heart and your mind. What can I do personally, corporately as a church? What can I do as a communion, community? to reach outside of my safety net. That's right. Reach outside of my family. Mm -hmm. Implement programs that will help people see the love of Christ That's and right. not get mad when folks don't want it right away. That's right. Got to think about it. We've been neglecting folks for a long time. Yes. So we can't think that the first time we reach out to them hmm. that we're supposed to have a mass, everybody That's come right. to their Amen. life to Christ. That's Amen. not how it works. Amen. That's not, that's not how it works. But God said you can start right now. Mm. Remembering what true salvation is all about. Remembering the end game. Remembering your purpose. Remembering that he's in control. Remembering that if we are unreasonable in our practices, uh -huh. in our polity, in our guidelines, that's ultimately tempting God. Yes. And remember how amazing God's grace has been for you. Listen, I'm going to throw you a little caveat. When you go back and read this text tonight and this week, read the entire 15th chapter. It's a great text to point to what we're supposed to be doing. Acts talks about the first century church and how we should follow its guidelines. It talks about, in verse number six, the apostles and the elders, which are essentially the, the pastors, the deacons, they came together to consider the matter. They mm -hmm. were the decision makers. Yeah. I didn't make it up. I know somebody is saying now, Pastor, you making it up. No, it's in the word of God. That's right. God anointed mm -hmm. them. That's why he put two offices in the church. He anointed them That's right. to do what's best for the body. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching right now. This ain't a fall out your pew and shout message, mm. but I'm teaching right now how the word of God says the church should be structured. Mm -hmm. And when we get outside of that, that's when we're going to fail to minister the way that we're supposed to. I want you to challenge yourself to say, hey, what is true salvation all about? Mm -hmm. What is the end game? How, how is the church supposed to look? How, how is it supposed to be structured? What is the pastor's, the, the deacon's role in all of this? Mm -hmm. I really want you to challenge yourself to begin to dig into how God wants it. And I believe that if we do that, then we can naturally begin to reach out side of our walls. All right. Listen, if you're on the call today 
And if you've not made a commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you can do so right now in the name of Jesus. You can join the church via Zoom or you can call me and myself and the deacons will walk you through the plan of salvation. Amen. You may join Amen. by a letter, Christian experience or candidate for baptism. If you do not know Jesus as your personal savior, it's a good time to know him. Amen. We can begin right Amen. now teaching you what true salvation is all about. Oh, and I God. promise you, we're not going to stop it baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're going to keep it going with Amen. and Amen. teaching Amen. them to obey everything I have commanded you because that is our responsibility. Mm. Listen, God bless you all for coming on today. I appreciate you for signing out and signing back in as Zoom had a few technical issues this morning. Remember that on Wednesday night at 6.30, Wednesday night at 6.30, we are going to uh, be studying Sunday school lesson for the following Sunday. So we invite you to come to that. Continue to be safe. Continue to be strong. I want all of you uh, to remember to pray for those who are hurting right now. Pray for those who are suffering right now. Pray for those who are experiencing bereavement. Yeah. Remember to be lifting yeah. up Sister Doris Butler and her family uh, as they are mourning the loss of Troy Rousen, uh, who has come and visited us several times. Uh, that service is going on today at 11 o'clock. So be praying for them uh, for that as well. I want to tell you that I love you and God loves you too. Amen. We're going to close with a word of prayer and benediction, and then we'll be ready to fellowship uh, and go on with our day and watch some football. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our God and our Father, God, here we are again, just a few of your humble servants. God, we come realizing that this grace in which we talk about is so amazing. This mercy in which we talk about is so brand new and fresh each and every morning. We reverence you this morning, God, as the great I am, the great Jehovah. We reverence you, God, as the beginning and the end. In fact, God, who else could hang the sun in the sky to govern the day? Who else, oh God, could strategically place the moon to govern the night? God, who else can hold the earth in place on her axis? with nothing holding her, O oh God, but your grace and your mercy. You are an awesome God. Now, God, we come with a spirit of confession this morning, asking for forgiveness for our sins. But not only, God, our sins, we ask that you would forgive those who have sinned against us. We come, God, with a spirit of thanksgiving this morning. Yes, Lord, we've been through global pandemic, we've been through death, uh, we've been through heartaches and headaches, setbacks, but God, we feel like that it's a setup, oh God, for something good. So we pause to thank you, God, for what you brought us through. We thank you, God, for what we're going through right now. We thank you, God, for what you're about to do. And now, God, your word declares that we don't have because we don't ask, and when we ask, we don't believe that you can do it. So now, God, we are asking that you would refresh your spirit inside of us. We know, God, that the flesh is weak. We battle with the flesh, oh God. But God, we pray that you would stir up our gifts inside of us, stir up our minds, stir up our hearts, oh God, that we may focus more on your will. Help us, God, to remember what true salvation is really all about. And remember, oh God, that the end game is for not only us to be saved, but for us to reach out to our brothers and sisters who do not know you. Help us, God, to reach out through programs, reach out uh, through processes, reach out through the way that we love one another on a daily basis. Father, help us to really do the work of the ministry and not just show up at the ministry. And God, through all of this, we're going to be careful to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. 
Father, remember those on our sick and shut in list, oh God, the Linshell Walkers, oh God, touch in the name of Jesus. The Teresa Purvis is the Siobhan Pampley's touch in the name of Jesus. The Maxine Thompson's, the Ida Bell's touch in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you would touch right now uh, the Rousen family, oh God, the Butler family in their time of need. Let them know, God, that you make no mistakes. We want to say that we love you, God. We bless you and we cannot make it without you. And now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us henceforth and forevermore. Let us agree by saying amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. God keep you. You may unmute at this time and say hello and goodbye to everyone. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. Hello. Y'all have a good week. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning and God bless everyone. Good morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Good morning. Everybody have a good week. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Enjoy the message. Good morning. Have a wonderful week.